At number 5 we have the Limgrave Trap Chest. Starting off our new series on the most memorable moments in Elden Ring is just vintage from Saw. You see, our Lord and Savior Miyazaki is known for two things. One is creating some of the greatest games ever made, and the other is being a gigantic troll. One of his most famous examples of this is the Mimic Chest of Dark Souls. If you weren't aware, sometimes chests you would loot for rewards would actually be enemies that would kill you when you open them. To avoid that, you'd hit every chest before opening it just to make sure. Like I said, he's an evil and twisted man. Any of us who played these games approach all the first chests in Elden Rings with caution and would give it a good swing of the sword to avoid any Vietnam-esque flashbacks to our journeys in Laudren. And just when you think he'd zig, he zags, and we found ourselves in a whole different region we weren't prepared for. You just left a peaceful grassy area in Limgrave, and now you're in the rotting, death-infested lands of Kaled, an area we certainly weren't ready for. To make matters worse, you can't teleport either until you find a site of grace, and after getting killed in one hit a few times, eventually you find one, and it's gonna be a few minutes before you even realize you can fast travel again, though. As someone who played the previous games, I found it very exciting that we were still gonna get these kind of twists and turns that we wouldn't expect, but if you're new and didn't expect it, well, welcome to From Software, Tarnished. These great games usually don't make us laugh, but when they do, they really do. Most of them have to do with one character, the main character of Soulsborne, Mother Fucking Patches. Patches is a recurring character in FromSoft games, and he's mostly known for as the ultimate troll for kicking us off ledges and being a silly little guy pulling off devious tricks just in general. But this time was a little different because we actually found him as a boss for the first time. It was shocking, but not like our other moments. No sense of wonder, no moments of overwhelming emotion or pure beauty, just a hilarious twist on an iconic character. Expect more of him in later entries in this series, because I just can go on and on about my love for him. The fight may end in moments, he may not be the greatest warrior, but it really is just patches the unbreakable tethered spider guy's world, and we're just living in it. Meeting Ronnie the Witch is one of those moments in Elden Ring that sticks with us for all the right reasons. Not because of those horrifying crawling hands that inhabit the dungeon before her. I remember first meeting Eiji, the giant blacksmith, and he warned me not to head towards Karia Manor. Naturally, I ignored his advice and went on my way, but then as I approached, I was immediately bore mirrored by these huge, magical arrows raining down from the sky. While sitting at the death screen, the excitement was through the roof, and I couldn't wait to see what bosses and rewards were hidden inside. Carrier Manor itself is a mini legacy dungeon, and exploring it was a blast. When I stumbled upon the Sword of Night and Flame, seeing it was one of the few legendary armaments made me feel like I found a place that was really important. I didn't care about the rewards anymore. I realized quickly this was a place about to become something really special. After a quick boss fight, I saw there was more to explore, and that leads to the real moment, meeting Ronnie the Witch. She was the narrator of the story reveal trailer, so I was quickly realizing I was right that this place was very, very important. But if you didn't see the story reveal trailer, From Software did a phenomenal job of building that sense of wonder either way. And finding out how much she had to do with the story, the journey, and possibly From Soft's greatest quest they ever made, almost makes replaying this just as impactful. Finding possibly the most important character in the story by accident through natural exploration was masterful work. And let's not forget the new cast of characters we met. On our way, we met the friendly giant Eiji, personification of people who play intelligence builds, everyone's least favorite dickhead, Seljavis, my best friend in the entire world, Blyde the Half-Wolf. Ani herself is shrouded in mystery with her ghostly and frosty figure. There's a lot more on that called Rule 34 Rani. Check that out if you'd like to see more. You're, you're welcome in advance. If you were to explain to someone who has never played Elden Ring that one of the most unforgettable moments in it was an elevator ride, they'd probably laugh right in your face, but I doubt any tarnished are going to disagree about this one. Limgrave is a 10 out of 10 entrance to Elden Ring, and contrary to what the mentally ill members of the Bloodborne cult want to tell you, this is the best introduction to any Soulsborne game. FromSoft really knocked us out of the park because I think a lot of us were expecting pretty much just Dark Souls 3 in an open world. Walk around, maybe find a cave, kill a boss, and get a reward. But Limgrave made it very clear they were putting a lot of work into exploration, and natural exploration at that. Instead of going from point A to point B, you find something, catches your interest, you follow it, and you're on a whole different path than you set out for. 
and there's no better example of this than finding Siofa River. The building is unassuming, but it's there and it's really small, so why not take a quick look? Then to your surprise you're in an elevator and you're going down further and further and further only to greeted by what looks like the most beautiful area you've ever seen. Loomgrave is grassy with trees and open fields and seeing a more ethereal area with completely different color palettes was a great choice to add to the surprise of it. I got my brother into the genre with Dark Souls 3 and each of us were playing it in its own world in a party chat. I was pretty well ahead of my journey at this point, and when I heard him getting frustrated by the rune bears, I knew he was close and I could not be more excited to hear how he was going to react to once he found the river well. Because of all its twists and turns, seeing someone play Elden Ring is kind of like watching a friend or family member watch Game of Thrones for the first time. All of the mind-blowing secrets you uncover are kind of like plot twists in a TV show. And his reaction did not disappoint. He deadass just laughed out loud. And I still remember hearing him say, there's just no way. It's a moment I'll never forget. One of my favorite moments I've ever had in the video game without question. I remember riding Torrent and the music suddenly fading away, and only a few notes on a harp were being played. As I entered, it was taken aback by how beautiful and serene this area looked. There were very few, if any at all, places in Elden Ring as beautiful as this one. For some reason I got off of Torrent just to walk around and take it all in. There was something different about this place already. I was starting to get confused when there was no enemies to be seen. I found myself wondering why in a world of towering infernal beasts, skeletal dragons and the like, why is this place so far removed from any kind of the death and despair we're used to. It was strange to say the least. Then I saw an item surrounded by a field of golden flowers and began heading over to it. After reading the item description of Minor Erdtree, I discovered I was in America's homeland, right where the whole story began, the place that set the entire story of Elden Ring in motion. Because the story is told in such an unconventional way and so much of it is left up to interpretation, I understand why that's not for everyone, but trust me, it's so, so worth it. Every boss, every important item, it all means so much more and there's more emotional weight behind every encounter that you have. Covering Shaman Village and finding out what it is was everything I love about FromSoft's method of storytelling and everything I love about the natural exploration Elden Ring mastered. It came together for one of my favorite moments I've ever had in a video game. In a DLC full of epic boss fights and heart-pounding combat, finding this tranquil and peaceful village somehow stands above them all. Let me know your list in the comments, I'm always down to talk about these games, and I reply to every single comment, both positive and negative, and let me know what videos you'd like to see next. And check out the video on the screen now for another ranking. Love you guys, see you in the next one.